Okay, here we are. We're doing franchises. Now, I think a nice thing to do now would be to learn how to, how to spell the word franchise because God knows I don't know how to. Um, and it's just, it's just one of those things the examiners see and they think, well, maybe this person's not that good. So try and learn how to spell it. If you can't learn how to spell it, if you're like me, just look in the question. The question will have the word. So just use that back. Okay, so here's a definition for a franchise. Please do not do this as a definition. Do not go, a franchise is when one person lets another person use their business. That's just weak. You're better than that. We're much better than that. So instead, I want you to say this. It's when a franchise or, oops, a franchise or like this, grants license to a franchisee to allow to allow its trade using the brand business format. Now you can cr- cross that if you want. If you just, that's basically it. As long as you say a franchise or gives license to a franchisee to use their brand, that's all you need to say. But you, I want that definition. Right, if you're thinking, you know what, I'm quite tired now, I'm bored of this guy, you could quickly go onto your website now and Google Music, Mud and Making Money and then you'll, there'll be a, a clip of the franchise and this is a really good way of remembering some of the good things and bad things about being a franchisee and a franchisor. I thought this would be nice for a couple of stats. So, franchises, this is one of the main reasons why you want to be a franchisee so if I, and I'll explain that later on. A franchisee is a person who's like me. So if I decided to be like set up at McDonald's, I'd be the franchisee because I don't own McDonald's. Fran- McDonald's are the franchise or anyway. This is the main reason why you'd want to be a franchise e. Ninety percent of um, franchises are profitable. This is because everyone knows your business, so they actually they like you already. Whereas if I set up Mr. Robinson's Burger Van, lots of people would go past and think I'm not going to get burger from that guy. I do not trust that guy one little bit. Like, I'd have, like, my name on the side, I'd put loads of effort in, and people still wouldn't trust me. But if I went down to Mackie D's, it would be like, yes, you can trust Mackie D's, and I'd be profitable. Anyway, normally they have to borrow 70 grand to start up, on average. Um, don't really matter that, pretty boring. Average turnover, £360,000, um, but turnover is the key word, so we're not taking into account costs there. Right, I don't really know what that means, and who cares about the rest of them. The big bit there is the profitable bit. Here's just a few interesting stats, right? Because I thought it'd be might as well keep this interesting for you. Um, a lot of the time, you have to pay an initial fee to be a franchise between 5k and 200k, depending on what you're franchising. So if you're getting a McDonald's, it's probably 200k. If you're getting like, you know, one of those kind of crappy um, like smoothie making things, that's probably 5k. You've also got to pay a fee. Now some people call it a service fee. I've always called it a royalty, and that's between five and twenty percent of your sales. You also have to pay a little bit for your advertising sometimes. And you also, now this is the worst of it, you have to buy your stock from the franchisor. And their stock might be stupidly expensive. So say you've got one of those smoothie places and you have to buy all your fruit from the franchisor, you might get screwed over on that. Okay, now this question, I'll, I want you to stay with me when I say this. They, they might either ask you what's good and, bad about, good and bad about it for the franchisee or they might say it for the franchisor. Now remember the franchisee is the little guy. That's the guy... He's just some random person, so I'll do a little drawing to help you. Here's this little guy. He's got a wee bit of money. He's quite happy. And he's decided to buy into a McDonald's. He is the franchisee. So what's... I think there should be an extra E there. Anyway, franchisee. Um, so, I'm going to check that in a second, that spelling, because that does not look right. Anyway, so the, he's the little guy. What would be good for the little guy of setting up a as a franchise and getting involved in the franchise? Right, let's have a look at it. I'm going to start off with, now hopefully I can make this a different size, don't go away. Here we go. So, it's still your own business. So, even though it sounds like a bad idea, you still get to run that business. So, there's still a bit of positive there. For me, that's a rubbish advantage. Don't use that one. Next one. Right, this is really good. It's a tested and developed format and brand. So, you can, you can trust that people like your brand. You've, you've seen already that this brand is successful somewhere else. So, you're going to do well. I once met the guy in Nottingham who owns like four subways. He was like the, the kingpin of, of, of subways in Nottingham. He thought he, he owned the whole place. He was so happy with himself. And the reason why he's done so well was he started up his own subway. Like in the end, everyone trusts subway. If he just set up his own little salmon shop, people wouldn't have gone to it. Right, you get loads of advice, you get loads of training. Now, it's easier to raise funds. It's easier to get a loan because if, you went to a, if I went to a bank and said, I want to set up Mr. Robinson Burger Van, they'd go, no. But if I said I want to set up a McDonald's and it's proven to be successful, then you're much more likely to do well. Right, what else is good? I'd, I don't really like that one because I think you do need to know about the industry. I don't know why that just turned red. 
Um, right. I don't like any of those other ones. One of the big ones I want to say is I want you to say 90% successful. So all you've got to do is pick two of them, two or three of them you think, well, I know them, and explain them really well. Okay, so I was right. The spelling was wrong. You need the two E's at the end. Right. Um, so the disadvantage of a franchisee. So why is it actually not that great an idea to be a franchisee? Well, your first thing is, it's not cheap. Initially, you have to pay a fortune just to get involved, and you don't get to keep all the money. Um, right, because you have to pay royalties. Secondly, what does it say? Restrictions on actions, including selling. So I've just set up at McDonald's. I'm really pleased with it, and I think, you know what? It's ready. They're ready for this. I'm going to make the Mr. Robinson burger. It's going to have, like, what's going to make Mr. Robinson's burger better? I don't know. Maybe it's going to have, like, um, like guacamole on or something. Like, that, that basically be my only thing I've got. Would I be able to make the Mr. Robinson burger? No, they wouldn't let me. They'd say, Mr. Robinson, we don't trust you. You can have the Big Mac, you can have the McFlurry, you're not having the Mr. Robinson burger. Um, right, what else am I chatting about? Don't worry about the problem sending on, I think that's a rubbish point. Um, what else can we say? I think the rest of these ones are not very good. Don't like them. So what have we had so far? Instead we've had, they're not cheap, I like that one so far. There's restrictions on actions and selling, I think that's really good. And I think for a third one, what you could say is, you don't feel like you own your own business. So you don't get that moment where you get to say, I'm, I'm my own boss. Because you're not really your own boss, you still have to answer to a kind of a higher, a higher group. Okay, so now you've said all the stuff for the franchisee. You, there's going to be a few choices. Either the question's going to say, what's good and bad for the franchisee and the franchisor. That means you can put all this stuff in, you can probably write for about 12 pages. But what they might do instead is to say what's good and bad and bad good and bad about it for the franchise or so this is like McDonald's the big guy what's good and bad about I can't say it good and bad about it for McDonald's so let's go for um, good first um, don't worry first of all you can expand really quickly like these are all the McDonald's in the U S look how quickly they've expanded because you don't have to as McDonald's you don't have to have the money to set it up the franchisee will give you that money. Secondly, you get lots of profit from the initial fee, then you get royalties, then also you get to sell the raw materials. So you're just constantly just getting money from them, these franchisees and it's keeping giving you more and more money. It's amazing. Right, but there are some downsides and there's the obvious first one. Your reputation might be ruined by the bad franchisee. Now I've chatted about this before but it's important that you know this. The, the McDonald's where I live in Mega is dreadful. If you're ever going past the bridge um, into England and you think, well I fancy some McDonald's, there's a, there's a sign here for it, just don't do it. You'll go in there and it'll just upset you, it'll anger you even. Like these people are incompetent. Like every time I go in there, I make it my I make it my duty to write a complaint card. That's how bad they are. That's how sad I am. Um, but the point is, they're ruining McDonald's for me. Every time I go to McDonald's, I think oh, I hope it's not that, that, that like that one in Mega. Anyway, I've had my rant. Next one, you lose control over your business. So you can't do exactly what you want anymore because it takes you ages to tell everyone what you want to get them to change it. You're losing control. Um, that's what I'd say. And then finally, the third one, which is probably an easy one to say, is you don't get all the profit. Right, so if the, the ways this question could be asked, right? Okay, so I think there can be three questions here, right? There could either be, what's the plus and minuses for the franchise E? And that's a little guy. And if it's that sort of question, it's probably going to be eight marks. And I'd probably do a final conclusion. And my final conclusion would be, if I was a franchisee, I'd go for it because 90% of the franchises are successful. The other question they might ask you, they might ask you what's good and bad for the franchise. Or, and for the, that might not be how to spell it, <laughs> for the franchise or. Again, that's going to be eight marks. And you can say, in grand finale, it's probably good for the franchise or because they can expand really quickly. But, if they're asking a really long one, they might say what's good and bad about for the franchisor and the franchisee. Now, if they do that, it's going to have to be a 10-mark question, and it's going to be an absolute mission, that one. The key to that one is splitting up your answers, making it really clear which one you're talking about. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do not do this. Do not start talking about franchisee when they've asked you about franchisor. Make sure you read that question and think which one are they actually asking about.